keeps on growing. That's that's terrific. Actually, it's actually it's not terrific because that means they, you know, if nobody showed up, we'd be very boring, and we want to be, we want to go into the back to the boring stage. Uh, in any event, um, we, I call the meeting to order. Um, I want to um, note that this is a regularly scheduled meeting. It's been published as a regularly scheduled meeting, but um, uh, when we sent the agenda out, we put the word in the heading. Um, we, we put in special meeting in the heading, and it's not a special meeting. It's a regular meeting, so it's typographical on the agenda. I just wanted to note that, and we'll, we'll fix that. And then um, we're about to start the meeting, so, um, but I understand, Chuck, you were going to make a motion? Yeah, um, we wanted to add one more item to the agenda, which is going to be a discussion of the uh, internal, internal, independent auditor for, for the year, and we're going to talk about that. We have a proposal from uh, PKF, and um, so we're going to talk about that and, and hopefully uh, be able to uh, recommend to the town to, you know, move forward with, with an auditor for this year. Uh, so, so we're going to add that to the agenda. And I think we need to vote. Uh, we need a second. And then uh, Robin, you were seconding that, weren't you? I think you're on. Robin, are you on? Yeah. He's on. He was. Glad you're probably. Good. I second. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and, good. And then we can vote. Yeah, then. yeah. So the first item is on the agenda now. So that'll be item two on the agenda. And and you said you wanted to move somebody up. So you all, when you get to your section, you do that, right? Yes. Yeah, great, good. Yeah. So uh, first item is we have the the minutes. So vote of the February sixteenth minutes. They're well done. We have a motion to accept that. So move. And I second it. Great. And Robin, I'm, Robin, I'm sure you're in favor as well. So that's terrific. Great. Thank you. Robin, on mute. Is he on? Yeah, he's on mute. He's on. Yeah. Okay. The third item is actually the well. The second item, the next matter, is actually the discussion of the independent. Let's do this one next. You want to do this one next? Yeah. No, we can do that. Okay. Fine. So, uh, overview of the we'll do the overview of the budget so we can let, let the team get back to their offices. And and you want to maybe and Sean, you want to maybe come up and do that. Okay, great. We'll bring up anybody else you want to support you. Oh, I see. We got it down Bill, I'm sorry. I had trouble with technology here. I was muted, but uh, your, your, my vote was recorded correctly. We voted you a pay increase. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't find the unmute button on a different device. Thank you. Hey, two times zero, zero. Zero, zero. <laughs> Bill, are you okay if I take item number F and put that first? Absolutely. Morning. Thank you, Morning. Morning. Um, Sebastian Calderwell, Town of Sasper. Um, yeah, I guess just to give an update on the revaluation that's going on. We just started uh, last month. Uh, right now, the process is data collection. There's no values. Uh, two bits away right now so we just want to make sure that that is correct uh, you just bring it a little bit close bring the mic a little bit closer typically so this one of the evaluation revaluations where we actually go out and they revalue all the properties revalue correct. all it's every five years right so every five years correct this one is a full reval which means they have to inspect and measure every single property in town that the taxpayers allowed them to do so um so basically right now we're just started with the data collection process typically a revaluation um values are based as of October 1st of every year. So the reval values will be as of October 1st, 2023 of this year coming up. So with, there's no numbers that anybody asks at this point or anything like that. Uh, the new numbers typically come out around November, December of this year. Uh, that at, During that time, that's when the reval comes to me with the taxpayers and discuss you know issue concerns or errors on it they'll do more inspections on it um, once that's done typically the end of december the first week of january then that's when it becomes official the ground list of the uh, taxable properties and exempt properties for the town of new canon after that it gets sent over to the board of assessment appeal then all taxpayer will meet with the board of assessment appeal again same concerns with evaluations then once that is all 
done basically um, that's when it's turned over we do the m13 for the town that becomes the official taxable uh, grant list and new mill rates arrive that typically uh mill rate when there's an increase mill rate drops if there's an increase just bring it back to level playing field and the increase should be based on whatever the budget increase is on it um so you know right now the way the market is we're probably looking at about 10 to 15 percent increase but again with the concerns of uh, the economy and things like that we just don't know because value day again is october 1st so is he, it's october 1st coming correct yeah correct yeah and then that gets factored into the 25 yes. 20 2024 no, it will be 2024 mill rate is for the 24 25 budget. correct but correct year, correct actually, correct two years difference correct. Between and fiscal. so is the um uh, is there only um one way is the process for valuation and reevaluation prescribed by law or by the code state statute by statute yes so there's a there's a methodology that they correct apply, correct they so we use mass appraisal mm -hmm. to come up with everybody's properties basically what happens we analyze all the sales that happen within a approximately about a year within the town and come up with values for everybody else right but it, we all follow state laws state statutes right once what happens is once the revaluation ends over the town the new numbers uh, it has to go through uh, statistical testing that has to get approved by the state to make sure everything was done with according to state statutes. So it's not as simple as just assigning numbers, we're done. There's there's a process that we have to uh, get in touch with the state to make sure it abided by their rules. Okay, I mean, so, so it bears no relationship to the, the cost of the town to support the property it just it just fundamentally with the problem correct right, correct right, right. yeah, there's yeah. yes there's no cost yeah mm -hmm. uh, no no relationship to um if there's a property that has 12 12 children you know school children all of going to the school system at twenty two thousand dollars per child um, versus someone who does no children um and doesn't cost anything it's, no, it's based on not, not what the property is uh, willing to buy, willing uh, sellers willing to sell it for, whatever the market brings it in. Right. So we don't know how many people are living there or anything like that. As I understand it, the the purpose of a, of evaluation is you basically are taking new properties, improved properties, properties have been destroyed, you reappraise, and so you're fairly allocating value and taxes to everybody in the town. Not necessarily. No. No. It's it's we're bringing up the values back to today's markets. Our reval is five years old, so our numbers currently, if you were to look at any property that's sold, based on current market conditions, they're probably about twenty to thirty percent below our values, yeah. uh, above our values. Yeah, I got that. I I was, I was at a much more theoretical level. If everybody goes up twenty percent, the mill rate dropped twenty percent, you'd have no increase. Everybody's so correct. Certain, that's correct. Certain new properties come on the market. They get added in, other properties are destroyed, they get taken out, you do an evaluation, then you set the mill rate. In theory, it's a way to ensure that every five years, everybody's paying their fair it's share. It's correct. And, and, and in regards to that, yes, that is, yeah. if there is new construction going on this year, yes. But the new constructions, improvements uh, done to a property, I do that daily, weekly, yeah, monthly, understand. yearly. So, so and that comes on board right away. Okay. So, I don't so have the, to wait for the reason. So, for example, the the mill the grand list for the twenty four mill rate is just kind of continuation and takes into account, you know, new construction stuff correct. like that. Correct. That the correct. people file here, and then you add that in, and that adjusts things. Correct. So, what okay. happens? But you is, don't adjust the base kind of stuff only every five years. No, no, no. Correct. So, what happens is once the grand list is signed, the board does their duty board of assessment appeal. Uh, any reductions or additions or deletions to do on it. Uh, once it's the M13, which is the, the uh, taxable grant list and the mill rate is passed, I'm still valuing properties, adding them onto the town or deleting clerical errors. So you, technically it's adding more numbers. It's not any longer, I, I don't have to wait for the, the budget or the mill rate 
it's already adding additional uh, tax revenue for the town. And the firm we hired is uh, to do this is a top quality firm. I remember it, they did a lot last uh, 2018. That is, they're the same company. When we went out to bid, it, uh, reveal companies right now are having uh, issues in a sense as far as employment goes uh, because of COVID. Uh, so they were the only ones that bid. They were the only ones that bid. Yeah. So we had no <laughs> choice. It's amazing. And how's, how's their number compared to the last time? Uh, it's higher, true, but <laughs> prior to the full reveal, it's the same. We're, we're within the same pace. Yeah. And they were, um, my recollection is that last time, I'm sure there were some changes, but they didn't have, there was no big problems with that firm. <clears throat> but I, my also recollection is 10, 15 years ago, uh, it was one year we did revaluations. We had a big problem with the firm, right? That, that, that's recollection. I, well, it's never a problem. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I, as I go out, I explain to taxpayers, you know, just because your assessment goes up 10% doesn't mean your taxes are going up 10%. Yeah, doesn't no, work no, that I, way. I thought we had a problem with the firm that ran the process for us as a town. Mm. Maybe I'm wrong on that. No, no, not that I recall. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Oh, you are. Appreciate it. <clears throat> You got it. Mm -hmm. Most popular guy in town. Daniel, you take it. Um, so, and you have some stuff here. The, best yeah. part. the major points of discussion for the preparation right now, as you know, where the board, the town council is taking a vote tonight on it. Um, the main point, uh, I sh actually should point out that it's been said in some of the meetings that we have not had public comment at either one. Um, you, you use the microphone. Sorry, public comment. The main discussion right now is on uh, our capital, as we'll be doing those resolutions probably within the next week. Um, so the budget process, and Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, the budget process went uh, very smoothly. Um, from budget, from the town perspective, we tried to do everything from a zero-based budgeting as opposed to adding on the 2%, going looking at every line item. Um, so there was no major issues with going through that for us and we're now just trying to go work through the capital side of it yeah so the budget we're doing is which budget are we doing we're doing the budget for 20 this year 24 24 which starts this this year july so 23 24 yeah yeah because i know that um the catholic school in town i think they just announced that they're not going to, going to open the school. not going to have students oh, anymore, right. close the school so right. what, what is what do we put in i mean is, is that in the budget at this point it's it's new news yeah uh, i i understand the the uh the number of students that would then flow into the public schools is de minimis de minimis yeah a lot. because there are a lot of a lot of children from out of town going to that school right not only that but i guess the reason why they closed is because they didn't have a lot of students right right and a lot of that was the i guess Having to be in Stanford, yeah, and they're referring them to another school, in other Stanford, Catholic Stanford schools, yeah. Walk someplace, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you could just run through a highlight of, I don't know, the budget, whatever. If there were any, what's in there? Yeah. Significant discussion points um, during during the process. Uh, significant differences um, that might have. Um, come about you know through the process that that might be of interest to, to refers to, to which page you're looking at these i have it on my iPad. The, so the the, the, the full budget is what uh chuck had sent out previously is the board of finance one yeah at your last night and then you have a hard copy of yep. the summary that's what the town council has in front of them tonight this one here that one mm -hmm. yeah so you have you'll see the um yeah so what is the um what are the made does chuck say you know is there I mean, a lot of it's just a little bit different from last year, and and so, but are there any major changes, major you know, major um, owns a concern? So the total is what like a table. four, four five percent increase, right? Uh, budget and OPEB was a change for us. They did a study. They did a, an experience study for us, which lowered our ADAC considerably. Actually, we came in. Let me just think what one was. Um, it reduced our budget by about. Let's see where it went. Uh, pension contribution. 
we're down to about 155,000 as an ADAC versus over a million. Mm -hmm. So that was a significant difference from us from that experience. Um, same with the OPEB. The OPEB where where actually, do we see that? I'm sorry. You'll see that on the second line down. It's the just the town side. There's also a board of ed side. But if you look at the second line down, the uh, total pension contribution. Yeah. Um, we are act our year to date right now. Let me just see where that is. The board re the board recommended is 155. Um, 155. 155,000 as the ADAC because of the experience. So we had a significant, like I said, we had a significant savings on that one. That's just the contribute the contribution. The contribution by the, the the town on the OPEB side, based on the value and again the experience that they've done, uh, we're budgeting zero again with actually taking 300,000 out of the town's contribution to the medical plan and putting it against the OPEB plan. So we'll actually start using the OPEB trust for some retiree uh, benefits. So that's a, a big swing for us, a big benefit. Um, Overseas, <clears throat> the whole pension OPEB, um, what what council, which which committee? Is that the finance? An RPAC, an RPAC, there's an RPAC committee, mm -hmm. which then reports up to, which contains a board of finance members. Before and that uh, yeah. then reports up to the board of finance on it. Yeah. Okay. And who populates that committee? The first selectman? I don't know offhand. Just, the board of finance. Okay, thank you. Chairman of the board of finance. The chairman of the board of finance. Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you. So is this largely reflective? What what time period does that take into account? Is it reflective of the, the good market experience a couple of years well, ago? Well, there was a couple of different changes that happened. The mortality tables changed. And I forget one other one. There was... Um, so, oh, yes. Yeah, smoothing. Thank you. Smoothing uh, on the OPEB mortality rates, the tables changed. And with the experience, um, the, the census of the experience of the people in the plan, right. um, all those collectively have changed that down for us. Right. So with the market, I guess your point, the market conditions. The, yeah, you know, so sometimes the sometimes the, the we're a year or two behind yeah. with the with the government plans oh I, with, yeah so you know so so you're not necessarily dealing with current current market conditions and then you got smoothing you've got all kinds of stuff that pension has to be done every year opeb can be done every two years what they call the actuarial report but what the town has decided and it's done of july 1st of every year um that's when it's actually that's their their main For example the stuff in the financial statements is is a year, 20 a year old right it was like 21 or something like that the report that we that was just done was based on July 1st, 2022. Okay. Um, what the town had made the decision to do as well from the OPEB standpoint, um, and the timing was fine, was perfect to do this. Instead of doing OPEB every two years, uh, a full one, we'd still do the full one every two years, but that one year in between, we do what's called a roll forward. So they don't do a full census study and everything that they would normally do. They do a roll forward so that we don't have any major high fluctuations if the value changed because that was an experience where the value went up and then went down um, and brought in the smoothing. So um, it was the perfect time to make that decision. Is it possible? I know you sent before the um, actual reports. The most current you'd like to see them yeah could you when you get them whatever you have if you could just kind of forward it on so is this tying into the, um, the board of ed as well do you have a reduction in the pension area as well yeah what what else is in here hmm. you're trying to just just to jump around a little bit yeah you, the B, you'll if you go down um third bold bullet point other right. both boe expenses paid by town um you'll see that went down as well so, so, um, is, but does that, is that, um, okay, so, we, <clears throat> so for same reasons, really? Yes. Oh, definitely for the same reasons. Okay. And then what is this 280,000 increase in Board of Ed? That's um, debt service. We have that line, right? 280. Which one? Uh, tax supported, about? I believe that's tax supported capital. So yeah, the tax um, yeah, supported capital. What is that? So that's any project, any um, non-recurring um, items that are below fifty thousand dollars. The we it goes through our operating budget. Anything above fifty goes to the bonded uh, five-year capital plan. So um, what we've done last year, we had bond premium, 
that had to be used and could bond premium can be used for two things debt and interest or interest payments or authorized projects that are not yet bonded and we had some bond premium that the only thing we could do with it was to use it for authorized non-bonded so these capital projects these uh tax supported capital what we did was authorize those projects so we could use that premium against it uh, we still had premium of that nature still left for this year so we, we used it again that's why the numbers are lower um and uh that type of premium now has has been addressed. So going forward, any premium received on any bonding can be put against interest and or uh, other projects. It's just after a certain time period, you can't do anything but put it against an authorized project. So it looks like it's an increase, but it's actually decreased year over year because it's typically, was it 1.7, 1.8? Between the Board of Ed and Town, Town's about 1.7, 1.8. Oh, Yes. So if we if we just kind of break this thing into buckets, the first part, which is the town, if if I'm reading this right, it goes from like 30, 39, 5 to 40.3. That what it says, which is like a 1.8%. Yes. And so and you and the, the main things you you just talked about a couple of decreases and the other increase is just the town operations the because you have contractual salaries and salaries, stuff like that, right? And then I don't know if there's the anything else, but then I know Sean, Sean was going to prepare to talk a little bit about the uh, the budget, the, the budget for, yeah, the, so for the for the next part, uh, which I is up about two 4%, charts, right? one on the operating, one on the capital where we are right now. So for the operating fund, the Board of Ed uh, approved a budget request of one hundred and three point eight million dollars. No big changes in terms of how we develop the budget bottoms up. Um, the year-to-year -year increase 4.8 million or 4.84 of that 4.8 million a million three uh, is attributable to a budget to budget increase in the just, isf just a, i'm sorry just a question so so the, you're talking about numbers that would be it's board of ed, board but of ed all, numbers but before some changes or something and that they don't seem to be the same numbers that are in here you, you wouldn't see those numbers on there, probably. Okay. This, I'm just giving you a little bit of a history. Yeah. Okay. What the Board of Ed approved, and then where it stands now. Okay. So you're finance. talking about what they approved, and then you're going to get to where it is. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. I just wanted to point out yep. okay. that of the 4.8 that was approved uh, by the Board of Eight, 1.3 of it, or about 1. You know, 3 percent of the increase is attributable to uh, the budget to budget increase in the ISF because last year's budget had a $1.3 million reduction to it, which we had to make up for. So, but that's where we were, uh, Board of Ed approved. Since that time, uh, there's been an adjustment down of 807,000 uh, or 0.82%. So what the Board of Finance has submitted to the Town Council is 103.0 million, a $3.94 million increase or 4.02%. So that's where we are right now. On the capital side, Board of Ed approved a budget of 5.3 million in total. Uh, the bulk of it was facilities related. There's another 240,000 of vehicles, and then the IT lease, another 730,000. And we have trimmed the number down to uh, 4.6 million, uh, and uh, we deferred a number of projects, you know, because we were asked to relook at it, reprioritize, and that's what we did. So that's what that's where we are right now as far as the uh, board of finance submission to the town council. Mm. It really surprises me the um you know I'm not I'm not being uh critical of what you're doing but it just it, it just you know when you drive around the world or the United States and you see any you know construction project or any any big use of vehicles they most of them say rented from you know, United Rental or Hertz or, you know, wherever the case may be. When you drive around New Canaan, you see owned by the school system. Are you talking about the vans, the white vans? Yeah, well, yeah I, 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 so that was my question. Are they, in fact, owned? <clears throat> and then, um, so that I means there's a whole multitude of questions. I don't want to take all the time, but um, I'd really be interested, you know, maybe offline to understand um, the cost of those vehicles and the cost of insurance. Because most in, most insurance companies, in fact, I only know one <clears throat> that um, charges insurance by mileage driven, opposed to just a flat rate. Yeah, you know, 
I do know the insurance on the these vans that we we own uh, are pretty reasonable. Pretty pretty reasonable. How would you define a lot, le a lot less than what I'm paying? Personally, <laughs> yeah. So how how could that be? So Kerma, which is the uh, like 160 towns and cities participate in Kerma, it's a mutual insurance company for the state of Connecticut. Of our, we have 157 vehicles, fire trucks, police cars. I think your vans are included. Yeah. Um, and we pay less than $200,000 a year for insurance for all those vehicles. Yeah, that's a good for deal. the most part, they, they don't go out of town. Your vans do. Yeah. And uh, so it's remarkably yeah. inexpensive. When we took over Getabout, they brought off six vans. They were paying $40,000 a year for insurance. And we asked Kerma what they would charge, $1,500 more. Fifteen hundred dollars more for six. Days. I have a few few okay. vehicles. I'd like to get into that program if I could. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so what's your conclusion, Kevin? I mean, you've got your business that that that, that insurance concerned. companies are gouging the no, general it's public. The or the, it's the experience mean, across Connecticut for for municipalities. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. It's just, it's, that's terrific. It's a lot. It's it's remarkable. It's, a mutual insurance company is kind of like if you everybody had a great experience, you pay less. So. I think it says we ought to buy more cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. Good answer. That's a good answer. So that's great. Do we ever get sued? What's that? Do we ever get sued? Okay. Well, I mean, seriously, I mean, just, you know, I just I'm report that does the insurance company. I mean, as far as these vans? Yeah. I mean, Pete, someone must get. I do know from uh, experience in another district, we had two bus drivers hit each other and we ended up getting sued. School district yeah, because we were we own the buses, right? So that's that's the downside when you own the buses or you lease the buses, your name's on the registration, therefore you attract lawsuits, right? We don't own the buses here, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the big yellow buses are owned yeah. by Dadco, yeah, good, okay, right? <clears throat> Learn something every day, okay. Um so generally speaking, I mean, is uh, how was the give and take in turn around the budget was? I mean, over the years, was the, how the process worked from your standpoint, Sean? With very smooth, very smooth. Uh, I'm coming from Greenwich, where it was a very lengthy process, especially getting through the RTM, which is a 235 member body. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a lengthy process. Yeah, Here, it's very smooth. Yeah. And bottom up, um, you, you, bottom bottoms up. When you look at, is it really uh, zero based budgeting? I mean, I, we, I, we do. I mean, we we budget by person on salaries. I mean, when you look at this four point eight million that we submitted, um, all of it was salary and benefits. Everything else was pretty much slightly down. And where is the teacher's salary contract? Is this is it is this? When was the last time that was? Uh, I think it's a, a three year ago. contract, right? I think, I think it's. I think the last contract was signed a year ago a year ago yeah so that whatever increase was in there is built exactly. into this and so yeah. on philly yeah we would we would always yeah. um yeah. we would always incorporate what's ever yeah. in the current uh contract good and do you um so like um the maintenance service and <clears throat> and both outside inside the schools and so on is, is that I mean, I, I know it's probably a combination, but do, is that a lot of our employees doing that? We tend to we tend to insource that, keep we that do. rather and, than outsource. That's a source of savings because mm -hmm. we do insource quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So we have a maintenance crew, uh, you know, electrical, plumbing, HVAC. We just got finally got an HVAC person uh, after not having one for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Very hard to find, mm -hmm. and uh, so you know, that, someone that has all the certificates and a lot of commercial experience so yeah we we try to insource as much as possible mm -hmm. to save money who takes care of the grounds outside is uh, that the, the grounds is are, that employees or is that outside sound yeah yeah parks, Down the, parks, and rec. parks and rec. yeah is that in that is that in your budget or is that in the part town. parks and town's budget yeah so the outside maintenance of the schools and the town budget out there right and what, what's the what's the philosophy of that that the Grounds owned by the town, exactly. Yeah, the other, but the, bu the building is owned by the town too. Building and the grounds, yeah. and then it's acknowledged in the board of ed's um, year-end report to the state as in-kind services. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. And during this process, budgeting, et cetera, and ongoing, 
the level of cooperation and transparency between the Board of Education and you is good, excellent, average? We've had no problems. With, I, we, I think we're getting along. We're getting, <laughs> we do, uh, you know, we uh, we call, we pick up the phone and just whatever that, we need, we call I and say, get the really detail. Cool. Yep. It, it's interesting. It just has to do with age and time. When we first, when this audit committee was first formed, the Board of Education didn't talk to the town and data wasn't shared very much or was forced, whatever. And uh, this is great progress. Well, at the beginning of the process, I had actually gone over to the Board of Ed to sit with their budget director and kind of get a sense of her process, her spreadsheets, and just how she does it since she had been doing it for so long, just to gather as much information and learn anything I could from her. Uh, she was obviously very open about how she does build it from the ground up and how personnel is handled on the Board of Ed side, since it's slightly different on our side. Um, so it was really enlightening. Good. Good. Great. That's terrific. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anything, some of the other and numbers are. So the, so the expense side, let, let's say is up about 3% in total. Is that the way to read oh, this? Sorry, I'm on the wrong side. Yes. Right. And we talked about, you know, it's like 4% for the education side and a couple percent for the town. So then if we, the revenue is on the other side, right? Um, obviously the, sorry. the, is there Sorry, the collection rate just so that's that's a that's a basically a formula of what the budget is based on some factors of right. use of fund balance in the final budget. So that number is obviously subject to change. Um, and as you could imagine, conveyance fees coming down um, from the effects of COVID. Um, so uh, a decrease on that number. Um, we have so the uh, collection rate the town is using is uh, 98, 90, uh, 98 and a half. Yeah. 98.5. And currently, I know it's one of the topics here, but I'll address it now. Currently, we're at 90, 99.59 um, for March. Mm -hmm. This time last year, we were 99.51. So we're up point. But I, I, I think it's, um, I, correct me if I'm wrong too, we actually had a spike in our um, supplemental vehicles yeah. of about two, 300,000. So we had more vehicles come in from a supplemental standpoint than uh, expected. Um, probably still the still the overflow of people moving into town and, and um, buying new vehicles versus some of the, we're still feeling the effects. Uh, everything is always still in the effects of COVID. Um, vehicles, used vehicles are appreciating, not depreciating when it comes to the state value because the state sends out the valuation on those vehicles. Um, the past two years, they've been appreciating. So. so, so the difference between let's say the ninety-eight five and the ninety-nine five, whatever it is, is I can do the math, but that's a million four. Yeah. yeah, how much? About a million and a half. Million and a half dollars. Okay, so we would expect that just the normal course of things that hopefully well, we would collect about a million and a half more than what this says um, if everything goes according to history. Yeah, our current financials right now, although you have, I put together, Josh helped me um, put together the F February financials for you. The March is what's going in front of the board of finance next week. Taxes are up 1.9 million. And a big part of that is to do with the um, supplementals coming in right. higher. <clears throat> Could you just take, take us through these um, four or five items that are right in the middle of the page on the revenue side? You know, they assigned balance from other uses next year's budgeting unassigned ending balance just could you just sort of explain that to me so i understand what they mean um so okay so if we're talking about the fund balance so the fund balance has um the assign certain assignments in there so they're going to have this right now it's the what we call the subsequent year budget so if we're using um I think in this year, last year we used 5.5. That would be assigned in the fund balance taken out from the the, the total. Um, I think it was 29, 28. We have other items in there that are assigned. We have board of ed encumbrances for year over year. What does it mean to next year budgeted drawdown? So at the end of 22, we have say, tw I think offhand $29 million in our fund balance. Of the $29 million, $8 million is assigned. We can't, we technically Sign. can't touch assigned for another purpose. So like 21 million is for a rainy day fund or? Exactly. And of that 8 million, we've budgeted in the 23 budget 5.5, I think it's $5.5 million. We have to take that out and put it as an assignment because if 
everything goes as is in the budget, we're going to draw it down 5.5. So that's kept aside. We have uh, encumbrances that are in there. They wrote about 600,000. We have some um, assignments for um, uh, a storm, just in case of storm, we, we put an assignment in there. We have heart and hypertension. We keep an assignment in there. Are good. you, is it correct to say that you're really that whatever you're looking at, that that budget, that year's budget, is taking money out of next year? Exactly. So as we're doing this year's fund balance, at the end of this year of 2023, in June of 2023, um, if we choose, right now it says 4 million, if we choose 4 million as the um, use of fund balance, I have to put that into an assigned bucket right. on the fund balance. So, so, I mean, since we've been doing it that way forever, I guess, mm -hmm is maybe it doesn't matter because it's, if you take any of next year's budget, the only person that got hurt was the person who started this, right? No, but the important point is, I, I think of the 5 million or four and a half million, we end up only using a million or a million and a half. So right. that the balance goes back into the general right. fund. General fund. And the next but we have to assign it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So, so yeah. But you, but fundamentally the, the 20 million is a cushion. Yes. 21 million. Yes, exactly. That you have unassigned. Yeah. Is there a policy as to, how big the cushion should be? I think the GFOA are, is 16. Are there state requirements for that? 16, I think, is. There's two, two questions. Who controls the cushion? And the second question is, how, how big can the cushion be? Well, the GFOA has 16%. I think Greenwich operates at 12%. Cool. Yeah. We've historically operated at 20%, mm -hmm. which is very conservative, I think so. And it goes through this, what these questions that you're bringing up right now are what the Board of Finance goes through when they're doing their deliberation on the mill rate to say, what does it leave behind as a funding, um, the 16, what whatever percentage it is. So Do they have a policy on that or is it just a guess? Every, I mean, it's just a, um, I actually, what the you know, chairman wants. I to look to see if there's a formal policy on that versus always trying to keep it at the 16%. I mean, yeah, we, we want to be at 16%. That's fine. You know, whatever it is. You know, so how much of the five and a half this year do we expect? Um, well, as I said, we're about, you know, two million dollars um, to the good with taxes. What we're waiting to see what comes out. And that typically doesn't happen until the next two months. Conveyance fees, because a lot of the conveyance fees start coming in May and June. Um, that's below budget of about seven hundred thousand right now. So it might be. So it, best case is the two million we know is there for because of taxes. Then we're just seeing the other items, building permits, things like that. That typically, when the weather changes, they start spiking up. That's what we're watching. Our we've hit our goal for um, investments. We've hit the five hundred thousand because of the change in uh, market rates and uh, interest rates we're getting in money markets. Um, and we've invested another twenty five million we hadn't last year, so we have that in there. Um, so we're doing okay with the right now, yes. Budget, the investment income versus the budget this well, year. We have we the investment income realized investment income is doing well, but we still have some unrealized that we'll have to um, hopefully by the end of the year might change. Is, is Joe on the phone? Is Joe is Joe still on the phone? I know he was earlier, right? Yeah, he's on. Hey, Joe. Okay. From an accounting standpoint, or you know, a Gasby standpoint, um, I know, like in non-government okay. accounting. Um, Rainy day funds are frown, frowned upon. I mean, I, li I like rainy day funds, don't get me wrong, but um, I've always had them. But in, but in you know, non-government accounting, are frowned upon. So in government accounting, um, is there any, like, could it, we got 20, could it be 100? Could it be 200? It, it certainly could be higher. I mean, the, 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 the bigger, biggest user of that is your rating agency, which affects your interest rates. So they're, they're the biggest driver of, kind of other than just having an emergency fund of, of, of really what the levels are. So, so you're, that you, you're, you're referring to it as an emergency? Well, well that's, it's a rainy day fund. Right. So if something happens, a hurricane comes through, FEMA only covers 75 I got that. I, I figured that out. But, but in, in non-government accounting, you're not allowed to have that. We used to. We used to. It used to be good, but you're not allowed to. I mean, I could tell you place where Kevin and I used to work there. They had, they like big rainy day funds, but no, no more. So what, what, just tell me what the accounting rules are. Uh, there isn't a specific rule other than disclosure that, you know, the, 
it's really the outside parties that are driving the level other than GFOA recommends two months, which is the 16.67 in fund balance. That's their recommendation, but you know, that that's kind of a flat recommendation. Short town should be higher because of different risks. I mean, so there's a lot of factors that go into a fund balance policy. And normally is driven that by mean you, a policy. Does that, does that mean you're past from an order standpoint, you're passing this on materiality? Is that what that means? What you just said? When you're forming your opinion, are you passing this on materiality or are you certifying this number? Well, it the the, the fund balance classifications are audited. So again, if you use subsequent years budget, that has to be there. Encumbrances have to be there. Uh, assigned is a lot looser. So assigned is really management intention. It's the other levels that we uh, <clears throat> more look at. So what should be restricted? What should be committed? If, if there's, there's certain action by boards that, that would drive that. The, the budget process drives that assigned piece. Encumbrances, that's just gap accounting. You already committed to spend that money because for gap nothing happened so for budget you're going to spend that money next year so that's why it's assigned it's it's all about what's available so the unassigned fund balance is what the the governing bodies can look at and say this is what's available to do whatever we think we need to do so that's what put that's why they push all that stuff out of that line into those other four categories but when you have a when you have an unassigned amount, which this is, right? 20 million. Yeah, I don't have the audit in front of me. Is that what unassigned is? Yeah, it's about uh, it's about uh, 19, 20 million. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to understand it. I just <clears throat> and it depends on each town on right. on what their threshold, their comfort threshold is. I know some towns that are triple A rated and they have a 10% policy. Yeah. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to understand is is um what would you know it's been there before, so I'm not being critical, I'm just saying. Well, when should we get nervous when it gets there? That may be another way of looking at it. When should we think it's too high or too low? Now, how do you audit it? Well, it, you know, equity is it's kind of indirect in a sense after we audit, you know, the operating statement and assets and liabilities. It's just the difference. Again, the auditing of the categories is, is by looking at the budget or looking at if something's committed or if it's restricted because which is not normal in general fund, or if it's non-spendable, if you have prepaid, it's just really following GASB 54 that says, here, here's how you present equity, and here's the categories things should be classified in. So that is part of the audit process. There's a big footnote in the audit, a whole page that shows you all the, all the funds and all the classifications of the fund balance. So it's, it's something that's part of our, our audit process to make sure everything's in the right bucket. Do any, do any towns have zero, fundamentally zero, close to zero? Uh, yeah, there, there might be right now. I've had clients go negative. You know, West Haven in the past is negative. They're positive now. East Haven at some point went negative because they didn't you know, budget the revenue side correctly. So it, it, it happens. The statute say if you go negative, you got to budget the deficit next year. So who... Um... So if, if if just if you took this twenty million out and you went to zero, nineteen million, whatever the number is, it wouldn't be triple A. Probably it wouldn't be triple A. You would. It would not be triple A. You jeopardize your triple A. Yeah. This is up the credit rate, credit agency, rating agency. Yeah, but if you took it out, you would go to. It, it would it would reduce the expenses. And, and require less mill rate and less taxes? I mean, it's just a question. I just trying to stay in the mechanic. So One-time savings to yeah. um, as a use of fund balance. So That's essentially what the- be Cutting your expenses. And it's essentially it's, what the five, five and a half right, or four exactly. million You're does. Decreasing essentially, that and that's then what decreasing that does. Your mill it takes rate. a piece of that back. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what it does, I, I think. Right. I mean, I think there should be a, a policy. There's a policy. As, what if has a policy? Uh, as to what the percentage should be, what the amount should be. It's over the sixteen percent, so I forget. What okay, mm -hmm. you'll you'll get that. Yep. That's fine. I'll get that. Out Does the that. board of ed have a piece of that, or is that? Um, I mean, it, it's the twenty million. Is that just for the town, or is that? It's, it's the town as a no. whole. So it's everything under it. it. The board of ed would come into play if they have encumbrances from a budgetary yeah. basis. They would yeah. be in there. Yeah. Good. Assigned. So any other two items here are? 
Just just a high high level again. So so the expenses are like three percent. Three point three point one percent. So the the mill rate, if I'm reading this right, is up like four point five percent. Is that right? Uh, four point four seven. This is as is right now before any change. This so the budget has to be set first. Then once the budget is set, then it moves forward uh, later. I think is it May? I forget the May. May, May the then the board of finance. And what happens then is the choice of what to use on the fund balance. Four million is an estimate. Let's basis. just say it's four million. Right. That's what the mill rate would be. And the mill if rate it, is four point four point five percent higher. Just conceptually. Conceptually, yes. Why, why is it a percent and a half difference? Well, we dropped the 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 use of the fund balance went from five point five to four. But so, but just an an increase. Um, the increase is 4.5% on the mill rate There's many and 3% components. on the expenses. I'm just, the, oh, the, oh, there's just, different components. just very high you gotta level. Look the, you got to look at the grand list. Do they, how did the grand list change? You have to look at all our expenses if they changed, our revenues if they changed. And But if the, the grand list went up anything, it would tend to reduce the percentage increase in the mill right, rate. Right, but there's, a, there's multiple components right? in there. So if it increased at all, it would tend to decrease the mill rate. If everything else stayed the same. Well- if everything was stagnant, if the expenses and went up three percent, the grand list went up one point oh two. And, and let's say the the grand list stayed flat, then your mill rate's going to go mill up. rate go up three percent. It would go up even more. It, it, if it, if it, the mill rate went up one percent, which I think it largely does, right? But we've other, like I said, there's other components in here. You're using a fund balance, so it's not a you can't equate it straight to if the expenses are X, then the mill rate should have a correlation. No real easy, no easy answer like, to there's that. There's too many components. Yes, that's fine. Components. I don't need components. to get into that. It's just conceptually, it looked funny. That's all. It does, but you, <laughs> there's so many pieces that pull that all together. I also, think about the non-tax revenue. So all of the revenues, conveyance fees, building permits, and so on. So that so if they go down, then that goes up. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, cool. Whatever. Okay. Good. We cover pretty much. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to cover this because you know the budget obviously is is a huge part of the controls for the town and and so on. So that's good. <laughs> Great job. So I think we've covered. Let me just look at the list. I think we covered no rate, major points. Board of Education collection rate capital. Is there anything in particular? Um, um with the capital. Um, and what the plans are for, let's just say, funding, um, bonding, new new bonding, and you know, kind of what all this means for for debt levels. So right now, um, there's no plans to bond until March of next year. So and it'll be a lot. So nothing this year. Nothing this year. Um, it'll be a larger bonding next year. Um, we ha do have the current bonding schedule. We have a cliff coming in in 25, let me just see it, 25, and a tw I think it's fiscal year 25 and 26. We have 1.7 in 25, and we have 3.7. If everything stayed the same, 3.7 in 26. So we'll do the larger, uh, we're doing a larger one next year, uh, March of next year, and then probably again uh, the following year because we'll have um, possibly the police station is going to be in there. So um, so our debt levels are going to go down by going down fifteen going million down dollars or something like that. Twenty-five and three point seven debt service. Debt service. Um, it, so it'll be down debt. to like eighty-five, and be down to. Oh, I don't. I don't have that. We're paying off about the past couple of years was so seventeen million. Then it's going to drop to fifteen, eleven, and then back down to eight. So. So whatever the, the debt was at the end of the year would or end of. I'm still in twenty-two. Yeah. Um, it was hundred million or something like that. I don't have that number roughly, me, but. So it would be down 17 million from that. Yes. At the whatever end the number year. was. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, great. I think we'll go to the next item, which is a, a new item. Bill, just, just to comment, you know, from an from not a committee point of view, I mean, we have delved into everything. We're not the budget committee, and then it should not appear that way. After this discussion, I, I have some perspectives. Number one, the teamwork and the transparency between the various major components of the town appear to be excellent. The competency of management appears excellent. The first selectman, it's obvious he jumps in, he understands what the, this process is. From a controls point of view and audit point of view, I think things in this town are pretty good and they're better than they were in the past. I agree with that, good, good summary. Thank well you. done, great, good. 
Okay, the next item is uh, the item we added to the agenda, which is the discussion around the independent auditors. And um, so I, uh, at the end of this, I'm going to ask for a motion in a second, but uh, we received a letter which was circulated to the committee members from PKF, you know, in terms of uh, the audit for the next cycle. <clears throat> um, periodically um, in the non-public, uh, non-government arena, in the non-government area. Yeah, changing audit is, is very rare or rotating audit is very rare. In the government arena, uh, it's um, becoming um, less less frequent. The changes are less frequent than they used to be. And um, so we, we thought about going out for bids this year. And um, we talked to uh, Kevin about that. We talked to Ann about that. Um, and we thought that um, assuming we can come to a satisfactory contract with PKF uh, for the current year, uh, that it would not be in the town's best interest to go out for a bit this year. We had some challenges last year in terms of the closing process and so on. So we, we want to sort of get, you know, um, all of that behind us. And we have a lot of other new things we really want to do and wants to do actually. Um, and so uh, by adding a whole new element of another firm coming in, it's a lot of disruption. That's why in the, in the non-governmental sector, people don't change that often because there's a lot of disruption, much more. And there's a lot of risk in changing auditors as well, uh, both to the audit process, but also uh, risks of people having significantly different views. So I'm very comfortable with not changing. In fact, I wouldn't even be discussing if it wasn't for, for the government arena. So uh, I think that, um, Anne, you're... You fully agree with that? I, I definitely do, and I appreciate yeah. that fact of yeah. trying to keep that consistency. Yeah. And yeah. Kevin, I know Thank you me. felt that, that. So so there's a process that the town has where Kevin and I, as the chair of the committee and, and the first selectman, and I guess the town council, town council chairman, we, you know, we, we talk about that. And uh, so we'll go through that process. So we, you know, we can't, we can't finalize our contract until we go through that process. And I, then I guess, if, if there's any other bodies that it has to go to, Kevin will take care of that. But that's the direction that we're going in. So I would make a um, ask someone to make a proposal that um, that would support that, uh, subject to uh, the town going through its processes to a final contract being drafted, um, and and uh, being comfortable with the final fees, which have been there's been some preliminary fees discussed, but she hasn't had a chance. Um, we had that discussion really negotiating that at this particular point we have to do that but i think we're close very close you know um I, we can't be more than 20 or thirty thousand off joe <laughs> all right uh, bill, bill bill can i make that proposal for the sake of the minutes you make a proposal yeah uh well i i it's essentially what you articulated i'd, I'd like to propose that we uh formally appoint PKF as the independent auditor for the um, 2023 audit now at this this meeting, that's proposal. And uh, given we have only just received a day or two ago the, the lengthy engagement letter, um, I'd like to suggest to, in, to avoid a, another special audit committee meeting. Um, and the, given that we don't have another scheduled meeting until June, that we leave it to uh, to you um, and Chuck, uh, Bill, to 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 work as you've described with the first selectman, with the with the uh, chief financial officer, uh, to agree the fee, the 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 staffing, or I mean the leadership of the PKF audit team, um, and the details on the scope. And I would suggest that um, to the extent Ed and myself have comments. On that engagement letter, we forward them to Chuck, and leave it to you and um, and Chuck to to sign off, if, as it were, on the detail. Great, thank you very much, Robin. We have a second. You're recommending. It. You're recommending. It. Recommending. It. We're recommending. It's recommending. It. You're rec it's just recommending that we could that you go forward. They're recommending we go forward the process I, I outlined. It yeah, the the, pro the the proposal, I suppose, technically, is that we appoint as of now PKF and 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 let you together with management. Uh, finalize the details. We just don't appoint. That's all. So no, we don't appoint. So we'll recommend. We recommend to, to the committee, right? Well, whatever, whatever, whatever it is that we do. Oh, yeah. and second, everybody votes in favor. Aye. 
We got it. So everybody's 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 in favor. We got that. Kevin, we'll get together. Uh, Joe, would you call me? I've got uh, one or two matters I want to discuss with you uh, before you have a conversation with Ann. Ann and I are on the same page on this, but I thought of you and I talk about one or two matters first. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Okay. The next item on the agenda is. Um, Thanks. Okay, the next item on the agenda is discussion of the plans for the 23 and the next steps. And so that's really a, a brief matter. Kevin, did you want to um, well, you're fine. I mean, you, I don't, if you were leaving, that's fine. I was just asking if you wanted to say something. I knew you were. No, no good, good. I can read my phone. Up. Oh, good, good. No, we're fine. We're fine. Sorry, sorry. Um, and we've talked about this a lot. Is there anything that we should, what do you want to say on this area? Yeah, I, th I think this is just a follow up to the discussions that we've had, you know, over the past few months and all the stuff we've gone through and, and just to kind of hear your thoughts as to how we, how you're going to progress with respect to, you know, changing things, maybe putting things in place such that, you know, all, all of the stuff gets done before the holidays, uh, as opposed to. Oh, uh, exactly. the way it no, the goal is so, so it was to talk about time. what process kind of changes and so on not necessarily now but but to to talk about when to, to set the stage to maybe a little bit now high level but then to come back and get into some more details uh, as to well the, the high level plan, is what your plans to hit are. the marks that we would normally hit so by june 30th um, you're just closing June and not a, f a couple of months. Um, then you have the two months in between to bring everything into place, which we should be on top of while the board of ed closed their books. Um, looking to set the, the prelim is normally June, looking to still do May or June, the prelim, and then um, have the main bulk of it being in September so that by October, hopefully we have a good not hopefully we should have a good working document on that. That's the goal right now. Um, and then at that point, then it's going to be putting it out to the boards. So why don't we maybe, we, um, just thinking about this, given the discussion we just had in the audit, so when you and Joe talk, some of that planning gets into his fee proposal as well, exactly. right? Exactly, yes. So why don't you both come back to us, assuming he gets approved, uh, why don't you both come back to us with uh, what okay. you agree upon as a schedule and uh, give yourself a little wiggle room, you know, um, but, you know, Try to make it as aggressive as possible. Oh know. no, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely cool. want to do that. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, the um, what about this? Um, the monthly reports on the, you know, some of the significant capital expenditures. Um, Ann and I and uh, Chuck and and uh, Kevin had a little conversation earlier. We're gonna, we want to resurrect, um, you know, the the audit committee back in 2017 did some work in the whole capital expenditure area and we had some recommendations uh, to the town council on that we want to res recollect resurrect that and recollect whether we're following that and so i mean and uh and not your i mean it's 2017 so you know, I don't know where, where you were. Okay, I don't know no, where no, we were on that but uh, yeah we'll have to we'll have to dig that out and see where we are on that so it's good okay. um so when did you do you want to cover this? You want Sean to cover this, or how how are we with um, uh, you know some of these projects and it's more more the reporting process? Uh, as far as capital projects, I, I I wanted to just cover a couple of the yeah, sure. major ones that we have we're working on. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, the middle school, we've completed uh, boiler replacement at at Sachs, uh with high efficiency boilers. We installed the CHP uh, at SACS, combined heat and power is what CHP, uh, utilizing natural gas uh, to provide electric power to the school at a great savings. Uh, we've also completed LED lighting upgrades throughout the district. It's been ongoing for the last several years. We just finished it all up using the Eversource uh, incentive program, which roughly covers you know 45 to 50 percent of the cost as an incentive and uh, and the payback is tremendous. I mean, instantaneous because the savings generated in, in electricity more than cover the remaining balance uh, of those investments. So it's a really, it's a really great program. Really noticeable, huh? That's a great advertisement for 
for everybody converting, right? It is. In fact, I was contacted by Eversource yesterday uh, because they read a newspaper article about the theater and the HVAC issues. So I forwarded it to uh, Bill Osman and, uh, and Ann, and they forwarded it to Tiger. So, you know, it's something that can possibly look into for potential uh, offsets to the increased uh, expense. Good. So, um, high school, again, we, we completed LED lighting. Um, so all five schools have completed. Uh, we are also in the middle of installing solar at the high school. That should be started uh, during winter break. We should be finished in the next couple of weeks. So we'll have solar at every school, which is really great. Still a couple more projects because the roofs are so large. Uh, so there will be a couple more projects. I think we have more work to be done at the high school and at SACS. Um, so potential savings there. Uh, and then um, condensing boilers at each of the elementary schools. Uh, one is in process at East. And at West and South, uh, we're waiting on additional funding in this year's capital budget. So once we get approval, we can hopefully get those boilers replaced uh, this summer uh, before the heating is, season. Is every project, so be careful how you answer this, because I, I mean, I'm saying, does every project that you do over a certain amount, right, get bid out? Yes. Through an, through an appropriation process? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And... Um, you always select the lowest bidder? Not always. Not always. Uh, Which is good. I think it's we when we when we frame the RFP, we give ourselves some flexibility in terms of ability to do the job, our history with them. Right. So on. I mean, someone could low bid and do a terrible job. Right. Right. Oh wow. And um how would you say the um how about the projects that you've done? Um, you, you're fairly new, so you may not have a lot of history, but how do we do in terms of coming up with an estimate and actually not blowing the estimate? So we you know, estimate 500,000 and you know, we're within- Well, little... recently the history hasn't been so good. Uh, with those three boilers at the elementaries, we budgeted, I think in total 900,000 and the bid came in at 1.9. So- uh, so we're, we we had to shift some funds to East so that we could start that work right away, and which is why we've had to request additional funding for South and uh, and West. So you bit you budgeted nine. Budgeted nine hundred for three boilers, and it came in around one eight one nine somewhere around there. So was it a bad budgeting process, or was it a bad, was it a high estimate? Uh, I think it was a combination of you know not a good budgeting process and inflation and, and long lead times and so on prices going up. So but that's, that's, that's a pretty big increase. Miss. That's pretty big increase. It I mean, is. It if is. we had that at our house, we'd be mad at ourselves. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. 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 I was, I was kind of shocked at that. How, uh, is that, is that the only one or has there been, uh, I mean, is it another one that jumps out? No. no. I mean, some of the roofing projects we've had, we've underrun. The budget on the run, the budget in the run is we've, oh, we've given four. back that money, yeah. So. All four came under budget, yeah. Yeah, that was good. So, okay, good. Cool. Okay. From, from, from purely just a uh, financial operations point of view, is there anything to highlight from actual versus budget that kind of stuff from either in terms of the, of the operating, yeah, just operating, just from the operating. Uh, through February? If you look at the as reported numbers, and I always look on an attainment of budget basis versus the prior year attainment. Uh, if you look at as reported year to year, it would say that we're going to under on our budget, but uh, there's a couple of anomalies in both years. Uh, one related to the benefits, the, you know, that uh, $1.3 million thing that didn't get booked into the ledger until June of last year. Uh, also, it's a month to month timing issue with our transportation billing. Uh, we usually get Two big buildings, one in October, one in February. This year, the February bill didn't, uh, we didn't receive until about uh, March 10th or so. So there's a timing difference in the February actuals on an attainment basis. Uh, but when you normalize for those, we're actually spot on, you know, slightly below. So would indicate we're definitely on track for to achieve so, budget. So nothing, nothing, no, nothing major. And you don't have any rainy day funds like Joe has some. Um, uh, not that I'm aware of. I haven't found any yet. Okay. <laughs> I knew that. Was, I was pretty sure I knew what the answer was. No, we don't do that. <laughs> um, 
and and anything. So, uh, as I said, revenue side, we're up about two million in the taxes, but we're closely monitoring permits, conveyance fees, uh, interest we've hit. So that's good. Um, so that's the main on the on the revenue side. The expense side, um, we did um, come in front of the board of finance because of utilities, because of seeing those costs. Because you do the budget pretty much 18 months in advance of you're coming up now with where you're running out of the budget from when you originally set it. So there's about uh, an estimated 300,000 shortfall there, but we had, um, we were doing a transfer out of what, what's called our special projects. We had some funds in there that are gonna cover it to protect our contingency to protect that. Um, so everything else right now within our budget is on budget. So it'll be just if we have savings at the end. Great. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Robin, you uh, anything else? Uh, nothing. So, sorry, uh, nothing else. Good, great, thank you. Um, anybody have any other matters? Anything else? Okay. Have a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Robin. All in favor, aye. Good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Joe, you know, you'll call me. Um, Anytime today or tomorrow is fine. Just on my cell will be great.